Good morning, guys. Good morning, guys. Good morning. It is um, it's a rainy, rainy, rainy day. Is it Monday? Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday night for us, Wednesday morning for you guys. You know what that means. What does that mean? What does that mean? Can't hear you. Tonight at 7? Bible study. Bible services. Bible study. Talking loud because we don't have the lapels on. Bible teaching service. The lapel mics we use, I left them at the church and uh, I forgot them over there. So we're going to try to talk a little louder because some of you are in semi trucks and you can't hear us. Like who? I don't know. Somebody by the name of... Uh... They didn't hear that. Somebody by the name of who? I don't know. A Cholo trucker? Maybe. Maybe. Just maybe. So, um, yeah, guys, uh, we haven't had a chance to talk with you guys, but we did a live RBT service for Sunday, Christmas Day. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, I really liked it. Um, I didn't know... I didn't know what to expect. I, honestly, like I was being honest, I thought only a few people were going to show up. Only because, I mean, it was Christmas Day and I know, you know, families get together and stuff. But it was filled up almost. Yeah, I was really nervous at first. I, I really, I'll be honest with you. I think within the first, first few minutes, I don't even remember what came out of my mouth. I think after I just... I think I after I remember a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it was a, it was it was fun. Uh, but then when we put the little theme, the little intro, you know, for it, and uh, all of a sudden it, it felt real. You it know did. what I mean? And I'm it like, did. oh man, you know, as that came on, and then um, I didn't know what to expect. Like I, I really thought it was only going to be a few people there, and then the theme music comes on for the RBT and. Everybody starts clapping, and then I got nervous. They didn't get to see that part, like everybody shouting and everything, because we were already up there when. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. So, uh, but it was a lot of fun. We had more than a handful of people, so you got to do that more often. And uh, but we'll see. You know, I mean, it is Sunday service, and I don't want to. I don't ever want to do anything that disrupts. I mean, I think it was great, you know, the way it went. But um, to say that we're going to schedule RBTs into Sunday service, I don't know how I feel about that, you know, because it's it's whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do, you know. It would and, be cool if we did it on a Sunday evening. Yeah, that's different. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to disrupt Sunday service, yeah. you know. The only reason we did that is I thought there would be like 10 people there, <laughs> you know. And I thought we would just get close together. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was already planning the 10 people that showed up to just come get close. Yeah. And let's have a conversation. Yeah. And then people kept coming and coming and coming through. And I was like, oh, man. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah. We enjoyed it. And then the, um, I think the the fellowship after was really, really nice to you for everybody to come together. It was really Yeah, nice. we had a lot of sweet bread or... or um, pan dulce. Pan dulce, some donuts, coffee, uh, coffee hot cocoa. And uh, it was great. You know, um, it was just, we had a great time, you know, and, and great fellowship and it was a great Christmas guys. And, and to even talk about it, you know, because every single year, um, like on social media, people are celebrating the birth of Christ or they're attacking Christmas and it just gets ridiculous. Like if you don't like it, then don't do it. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. like let, let. People do what they do, you know. It is, it is what it is, but um, I liked it. Yeah. I think it came out great. and um, But, you know, uh, it's now two days later for us since then. And, you know, um, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff, guys, that are, what do they call, what's the saying? Behind the scenes type of things that, you know, to have the Christmas um, service the previous Sunday, and then the build up to Christmas Day. I mean, it seems like it don't take a lot, but it takes a lot, you know. And uh, you know, I, I'm not 20. We're not 20 years old, so it it, it lays us out. You know what I mean? It, it really tired. And then 
So we're just on the go, on the go, on the go, and we don't notice it. But the moment we actually like stop, just the the just we're just exhausted. Yeah, I don't think um I don't think a lot of people knew, but we um we actually had an opportunity to to give out close to maybe I'm gonna say close to a hundred gifts for um our Christmas program to um, the children's to children in our in our in our in our service you know our Christmas yeah. program service in our community there um, and then as well we gave maybe close to 100 gifts um, the day of the food giveaway so that was between Christmas service and Christmas Day service was yes, the food giveaway and the food giveaway um, and guys, don't forget that all of this stuff had to be wrapped on, as well. Then we um, have close to maybe, I'm going to say maybe close to 170 gifts that we also have prepared for Eli to take to Juarez, Mexico. So we have this stuff sitting ready for him to take next week as well. Um, then we had close to maybe about 75 gifts that went to um, Lake Tahoe, um, to House Arrest Lake Tahoe. And then we were able to bless um, Lighthouse Mission with just a few gifts as well, maybe a good 40 gifts, 40, 50 gifts to Lighthouse Mission in Stockton as well. Um, guys, you know, there's there's a lot yeah. that goes into it, and uh, as well from that, you know, there was the planning of getting our girls prepared for um, their dance, you know, and and the practices, you know, with the worship team. And then we both got sick in the middle of it. Yes, in the middle of it, you know, we ended up with the flu, and I'm trying to get all of these schedules prepared and everything, and trying to figure out, you know, who's doing what and where, and then we got to get the, you know, I got to get the the church, you know, decorated. And there's a lot, guys, there's a lot that goes into it. And I don't think people do see the behind the scenes that things happen, you know, um, and, and it's hard. It really, really, really is hard. Um, and then you kind of, it's hard because sometimes you can't always find you know the people there to to constantly help you consistently and i'm that's why i'm so truly 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 grateful for my brothers and sisters that are so consistent um those who go out on mondays and thursdays to um to go evangelize we haven't even been able to go out there to evangelize with them because we're constantly constantly busy and we'll go and we'll go for like 20 minutes or something. And, and it's been cold out there guys, you know, and I, and I'm so grateful that we have people that still step in and they go out there and they're committed and consistent with, you know, with all the ministries that are still taking place throughout the week, you know, whether it be Bible studies and evangelism and everything else that is happening throughout the different weeks, you know, they still have that going. Yeah. And, you know, while we're still doing all the other stuff as well, and we're just so thankful because people are still have helping us run all of this. It's like it's it's like a, a well oiled machine where, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, everybody yeah. is keeping this going. Everybody. Because we say this because especially myself, because even before sharing came. Um, along in House of Rest, um, if there was no event that was going to happen unless I was there. No Bible study, no get-together, no coffee thing, no... Nothing was going to happen. And then, and then when you came, nothing was going to happen unless we were there. You know, but slowly it's been so beautiful to see Just everybody. Bible studies flourish without us there. Evangelism happening without us there different things happening and and which allows us and it allows us to continue to do more things you know yeah. what i mean and it's just uh we're not used to that you know we're not used to that and, and um, we're so thankful to everybody even even like the grocery um giveaway guys i i was laid out um 
that's that's well i think i talked about it already but i was so sick and um i just laid on the couch like i could not move and get up you know and, you mean you just sat on the couch you yeah laid yeah out. well laid out is yeah i'm not physically laid out but i was laid out it's yeah he was just he just sat on the couch while you know what we not were... enough i was not enough i couldn't even keep my eyes open and i remember telling eli i'm like man you know i i, I feel bad because i can't do nothing you know, and he goes, but you're here. The fact is that you're here and that that encourages the men. That's what he told yeah. me. You know, but yeah, anyways, guys, um, I really enjoyed Christmas Day. Yeah, it service. was awesome. You know, it was nice and seeing everybody. And, and those of you that were not able to come because you were with family, God bless you guys also. You know, I pray that you guys had a great time with your family because that's what it's about. You know, yeah. it's is being with your family, being with your loved ones, being with those that love you, those that you love. And, and we get it if you weren't able to come. You know, we, we get it and understand because we never want to um, keep people from family. Absolutely. You know, but it happened to fall. Christmas Day happened to fall on Sunday service. And I like the way Brother Allen said, he goes, because I told him, are you going? He goes, where else would I be? He goes, isn't that the whole reason? <laughs> yeah. You know, and um, so, yeah, guys, it, it was cool. Yeah, it, it was just uh, busy the last few weeks, you know. I had like the women's sack lunch brunch and then, you know, then the Christmas program. And then it was just one thing after another, after yeah. another. So, and then we still had Bible study dur during the week. Wednesday. So, yeah, we still had Bible study. But um, praise God, you know, we we're, I think we're going to end this, this year really, mm -hmm. really strong, um, which, you know, we're going to end it with a, a beautiful service as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we're going to go into 2023 really, really strong. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, but in order to do that, we have to we have to trust and we have to believe and we have to know. And I think this is going to kind of lead us into, you know, the scripture that we're going to be, um, yeah. you know, reading right now. So. Well, the scripture scripture we're talking about started with a conversation. Mm hmm. I don't want to just jump into the scripture. It started with a conversation yesterday because uh, uh, her son or that lives here, not Abraham, the other one. Matthew. He came and had some questions. And uh, the conversation doesn't really pertain to today's devotional, but it brought about the subject because one of the questions he, he did ask was, uh, I can't remember verbatim how he said it, but basically he says, um, you got to understand, guys, he's, he's not a... Christian per se. I mean, matter of fact, when he, when you first brought him, he said he was a self-proclaimed atheist. Yeah. And he doesn't say that no more. So it's it's gradual, very gradual. But yesterday he goes, and some questions. And one of the questions is he said, if he goes, I know there's a God, a Creator. He goes, but what I don't understand is why is Jesus called his son? Like, did G, did God, like, have relationship with the woman? Like, what happened here? What, he couldn't understand why he called the son, right? Is that, am I wording it right? No. I'm wording it wrong? Yeah. He just said um, he wanted to know that if they were too different, if it was yeah, too different. How he came about to be a son. Yeah. He, he just said he didn't understand how, um, if, he just didn't understand how if it was two different entities because or one. yeah or if it was one yeah. and so you used the analogy that you did yeah yeah mm -hmm. so i thought we would talk about that is is and guys um and i told him i remember i said you know this it turned into a long conversation yeah. guys we were here for about a little over an hour an hour and a half maybe yeah. talking about a lot of a few different things yeah. Um, which, which I, as a mother, just really loved the fact that he was here talking and talking and, and just really listening attentively. And, and it, it's, it's a beautiful thing when your son just listens. And I love that he says, I, I believe in God. And, and the fact that he says, I believe in God and I know that he's our creator. Yeah. I love that. I love that he says yeah. that now. I love that he acknowledges it. And I love that he, you know, um, that he always, you know, now says that now all the time. Well, just to show you the progression of it, previous, it, it, at first, conversations with him were about even the existence of God. Now it was about trying to understand 
the father and the son. Mm -hmm. So that's way different from talking to whether God even exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a huge progression. Yeah. But you know, it's, there is no dumb questions when it comes to the things of the Lord. When somebody truly is, because he's like, I really want to know. I'm really, I really want to understand, you know. And because of that, you know, I enjoy conversations when somebody is really, truly trying to understand. Yeah, because he's been doing his own research. Yeah. He, he's been doing a lot of research lately. So I want to read two scriptures to you, and then I want to share with you what I shared, the analogy. Mm -hmm. The first one is actually Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the very beginning. We're going to go there first. I'm going to, I have my new King James. I'm not sure where my ESV is at. It might be in the car. I don't know. Oh, no, it's in the room. The Genesis 1, 1, 1 and 1, 2. It says this. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And this is the part I want to get to. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Do you want to read it in the ESV? No, no, go ahead. Okay. Amplify. I mean, uh, message. message. Okay, so in the message, it says, First this, God created the heavens and earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. Right there. So God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. So now I want to go to the Gospel of John, chapter 3, uh, verse 8. Okay. John, chapter 3, verse 8 says this. Minus the, 7, 8. So. Yeah, I'll read 7 and 8. Okay. It says, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. At seven. Verse eight says, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. <clears throat> so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And the message it says, so don't be surprised when I tell you, when I, when I tell you that you have to be born from above, out of this world. So to speak, you know well enough how the wind blows this way and that. You hear it rustling through the trees, but you have no idea where it comes from or where it is headed next. That's the way it is with everyone, born from above by the, war, by the wind of God, the Spirit of God. Amen. So those two verses, the first one in Genesis says that God is a spirit because it's the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And in John, even Jesus says that the Spirit is like the wind. You don't know where it comes from, and you don't know where it's going. <coughs> you know. And I want to use those two verses with the example that I gave him. Those of you that have read my book have probably heard me uh, say this in the book. Um, but I, I, I appreciate the fact that that it helped him to understand. Because all of a sudden the light turned on. Yeah, it did. And I said, you know what? May no, you said you got to share this in a devotional. Yeah. Um, and this is what I told him. Okay. And and I'm hoping the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, r reminds me of how I said it. But basically, I told him like this. I said, you know, if I told you, show me the wind. Show me air. You wouldn't be able to, because you would just point to the sky. And I said, well, that that's. Let's say on a windy day, and you would say, "Oh, that there's there, that's wind," and I'd say, "Well, I don't see wind. I see the effects of it because the trees and the leaves, but I don't see wind. I just see the effects of the wind." And then I said, "Let's say you got a balloon, and you blew a clear balloon. You blow it up, and you said, here's wind.'" And I look, and I'm like, "Well, it just looks like a balloon. I can see through it. I don't see wind. Yeah. I still don't show me wind, you know, and." Um, so I, I noticed that he was just his mind was going because he was just looking at me like, how do you show somebody wind? How do you show it to them? You know. And I said, there's only one place in 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 our world where you can see wind in one instance. I said, maybe I'm wrong. I'm you know, I'm not the 
a meteorologist or nothing, but I said a tornado is basically wind that is so compressed that it actually forms a funnel because mm -hmm. there's the world cold wind. wind, there's there's cold wind, there's hot wind, it creates a funnel. And basically what happens is that wind is so compressed, so tight that it creates a funnel and literally destroys everything it touches. So in the essence, you can say that is wind. That's wind right there. That tornado. You know, and I said and, and I told them, I said, so, but think about it. The moment the tornado appears, does wind everywhere else in the world cease to exist? And he says, Well, no. There's it still exists. Wind is still in Australia, in, in Mexico. If there's a tornado here, there's a wind is still on the other side of the country. It's just that for this specific time and moment, you see it compacted that you actually see the tornado. I said, is that tornado ever disconnected from the atmosphere of wind? He says, no, it's all one. It's an effect of. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's never separate. I said, Jesus. He's like the son of. Is the son of God. In the, in the sense of, you can say that that tornado is a son of the wind but yet it's connected to it. You can't separate it because without the wind, the tornado ceases to exist. And without the tornado, you cease to see the wind. It's all one. It's all connected. In the same way, Jesus came on this earth for 33 years. And maybe it, he wasn't a wind, but it was a force that was so compacted so much that, that God said, I am going to show myself and manifest and reveal myself to the world. A force to be reckoned with. And all of a sudden, you see this funnel called Jesus, born in a manger by the Virgin Mary, reveals himself for 33 years, and everywhere he touched, like a tornado, he turned it upside down. You know, and um, I said, in the same way, that wind is a part, that tornado is a part of the wind, yet it is the wind, yet it's a part of the wind. And I said, that is the Son of God. That is Jesus here on earth. He, he was always a part of the whole. That's mm -hmm. why the Bible says that, that everything was created by him and for him. Because that doesn't make sense. Like, wait, so the world was created for Jesus, but yet it was created by Jesus. You know what yeah. I mean? That's why the scripture says that, because it's all in essence one thing. And I told them, I said, people build denominations to argue about this. They will argue, you know, I said, and, and I don't understand why I said, because when it's all from the same thing, I, I said, this, this little tornado thing, I, I don't have a whole bunch of degrees, but yet this makes sense. It's like the spirit, the Holy Spirit just revealed it to me. So simple, so simple, you know, and, and I told them, and even in the old Testament, that's what I told them in the old Testament. There's many times where we see that angels would appear and the people would worship and the angels say, no, don't worship me, only God. But there was some instances. And he, even he understood that. Yeah. And there were some instances where it says the angel of the Lord appeared to Abraham and Abraham worshiped. And that angel did not say, hey, don't, don't worship me. Mm -hmm. That angel received that worship. So I think it loses translation in English when it says the angel of the Lord but it is the Lord himself revealing himself, whether as an angel or we don't understand, we don't know that. But it says the angel of the Lord appeared and would receive that worship, but not just once. Yeah. So it's, so for times, mentioned a few times, the Lord had, has always existed. Yeah. People think like God existed eternally and then Jesus existed when he was born from Mary. Jesus has existed always because he everything was made by him and for him. Yeah. He is the creator of all things, you know, and um, and I just, you know, I thought it would be cool to share that is that maybe some people do get that confused and do get mixed up and or maybe, you know, you think there's going to be two different thrones in heaven. That scripture doesn't exist, guys. Only one. Or even three. Or like, oh, no, there's a throne for the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. There is one throne. One throne in heaven, guys. Yes. And however you want to say it, however you want to word it, um, you know, 
even Paul says, um, great is the mystery of godliness, that God was manifested in the flesh. Paul was like, I don't understand. I don't. I can't comprehend how, how God can reveal himself as a human, yet still reign eternally in the universe, you know? It doesn't make sense. He goes, I, I can't. So, you know, this is not something to argue about. This is something to marvel about. To say, Lord, I, I can't understand you. But you know what? But I think a lot of the times we're so busy trying to figure things out, then, then instead taking the time to just worship him and just, you know, it's like stop trying to figure things out and just marvel and worship him and, and glorify him yeah. and, and just don't worry about that, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, Let those things worry about themselves and let's just worship yeah. the creator and just marvel in his glory and and stay focused on him and that's 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 the most precious and the most wonderful thing that we can do now yeah. you know that, that's you know a couple instances real quick in case you're wondering reference wise if you haven't been studying with us on wednesdays we read we just read um the parents of samson it says the angel of the lord appeared yeah and samson's dad was afraid because he tells his wife i think we're gonna die because we just saw god face to face so, who did he see? Yeah. You know, um, we see Joshua who who wrestled with God. With God, yeah. It says that, in, that this person came and people say he, he wrestled an angel, but he says, I wrestled with God. Your name is now Israel because you have yeah, because you contended have with God. With God. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, there's, a, there's a lot of things, man, that, that we have to read a little slower to fully understand the old testament reveals so much if you take the time to just read it slow and really look and and, and look into things and study things and don't try to finish the chapter try to understand the verse you know and uh, but i love the fact that just that explanation of the tornado he let he went back upstairs content because he learned something he didn't realize before yeah you know, and uh, and maybe he went back with your book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I ended up giving my my the identity, identity book. book, and he went back ready to read. Because I told him, I said, I t I talk about that a lot deeper, the tornado thing in the book, guys, and and he took it. You know, he was he was. I'm gonna read this. You know, and um, yeah, because that's what that actually that's what brought it up. Because he came down, he remembered something I said during identity in Tahoe. Uh huh. That's what it was. Yeah, and it made him research. It made him research yeah. a lot more, you know, so. Yeah, because we were talking about all kinds of stuff, man. We were talking about uh, the serpent. Uh, we were talking about all kinds of things, and and it was a great conversation, and I pray that um, that those kind of conversations continue. He said he would ask more things, you know, and, you know, some people, guys, God knows how to reach different people where they're at. Mm -hmm. You know, and for him, he's a really smart guy, and I think he, it has to make intellectual sense to him, and that's all right. That's the way God built him. Yeah, he's a he's twenty he's twenty five years old, guys, yeah. and he's um all, uh, uh, he has um adult autism. Um, when you're autistic and you're um, but he's high functioning, and yeah, he's very high functioning. They're very very smart. Um, he very very into uh you know composing music and very big in programming computers and doing he's, he's a geek you know he reads a lot loves to read a lot and um educates himself a lot when it comes to books and everything and um but he's very very smart you know yeah. um but he he has um you know, when it comes to, he gets very overwhelmed around a lot of people, you know, and just, you know, it's, it's hard for him to function, um, around crowds and stuff like that. Um, you know, he was raised between his dad and myself and for a, a large portion of his teen years, he was with his dad. I'm going to say maybe in his, maybe from like 12 to about 16 years old. And, um, and that was a time when I kind of lost him when he kind of started going a little bit more south and he started, you know, kind of pulling away from the things of God. And, and when I kind of started losing him to the world and he stopped, stopped going to church and everything. 
and his dad did not do anything with church his dad did not know christ at all or mm -hmm. any of that so you know um, my other kids kind of grew up in church more and he did not at all and um it was just a really long story guys but um he came back saying you know i'm i'm atheist and i'm just like but yet then we'd sit at the table and he would say amen to things and you know we'd pray and and then he'd go through some really hard moments of suicide and and depression and everything and and but he he'd seek for prayer and he'd come to me and um you know i've been that mom where you know i'm able to love my kids and still you know talk to my kids and he'd you know you know he'd seek prayer guys he'd still be seeking something and um but I'm, I'm thankful that, you know, he comes down and he talks to us and he has conversations with us and he is very open with us. And, but he's, he's slowly, you know, I know we're praying mm -hmm. for our kids and, um, I see him opening up to us and I praise God for that. One thing though, that I, I um, uh, I can say is he said that he goes, you know, I feel like I want to say I'm a Christian. He goes, but I don't like what that triggers because it's been so abused. Yeah. You know, and I, I said, I agree with you. Because of how hypocrite, hypocritical. Yeah. He goes, Christians the church, the church has been in so much scandal. He goes, that it leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. Mm -hmm. And, and I knew where he was going with it. And honestly, I couldn't argue with him. Yeah. But then he said this, he dropped this one. He says, but he says, going to house of rest. And seeing how you live here at home yeah, uh, has made me change my mind. Yeah, he goes, the way you guys live your lives and, and, and just seeing you, Mom, and you, David, and just, you know, everybody that I've met. And you guys live it out, you know, and, and that makes me feel really good, guys. Yeah. You know, it makes me feel really good when my son can say that, you know, it, it really does, you know, it. it I just it, it, it to me it confirms man yeah. is, is what I've told every, I've told you guys over and over and over to guard your testimony yeah like the most precious thing you have and Especially that, at and, home. and that does not mean at on Sunday service that means everywhere because people are watching yeah Especially parents to your children parents you know why many parents you, you have trouble with your kids wanting to have anything to do with God because they see what you're really like at home yeah you or the deterrent of them seeking God. And don't be that. Change it. Change it. Be that example. And you can't, there's no way to act Christian. You just got to be a believer. You got to, you got to fall in love with the Savior. You do, you know, because here's the thing, right? Is that if I, if I truly love my wife, I don't have to act anyway. I don't have to put on an act. I don't have to do any of that stuff. Because it's a true, it's a true thing. Yeah. You know, and so it, do you, okay, put it this way. If you love your kids, do you ever got to act like, man, I got to act like I love them today. Mm. You just do. That's sad if you do. You know, and you got to learn who your savior is. Don't love Jesus because, don't love Jesus because people tell you you have to love Jesus. Get to know him. Get to know who your who your maker is and trust me he is like a magnet when the more you learn about jesus the more magnetic he becomes the more you fall in love with him the more you you realize that he is everything that you have ever wanted there is nothing more to have christ is to have to have everything it, it, you know and, and when when you fall in love with the savior you don't got to act anyway yeah. because it's just going to exude out of you, you know, and you don't have to be like, oh man, I'm around Christians. I got to act Christian. You're mm -hmm. just going to be who you are because here's the thing. Ultimately, I want to live a life that honors the Lord, regardless if it's in front of the congregation or in front here in my living room. I want to live my life in a way that honors him. You know, ultimately, we just want to honor him in everything that we do. Every, matter of fact, scripture says, in everything we do in word and deed, do it in the name of Jesus. Yeah, do it unto the Lord. 
yeah you know yeah. so but yeah guys it was a good conversation and um just wanted to talk to you guys about that you know and and hopefully you get something out of this and um please join us for bible study if you're watching this and if it happens to be you know a tuesday note that i mean a wednesday notice that uh, realize that there's a wednesday bible study seven o'clock every wednesday it's the best time to be interactive with us because we're live these are pre-recorded to release at three in the morning sunday services are live but i can't really talk with you and sharon and can. it's really a wednesday teaching service yeah yeah so we do worship we do uh, bible study um we we're reading your guys's comments you can comment ask a question long as it pertains to the study we're doing because we don't want to derail you know if there's you know 50 60 80 people watching we want to make sure we give them a study of whatever that title is yeah. but guys you know just join us on wednesday night and if you are near modesto come through the doors mm -hmm. are open you know Amen. so anything else no I that's think it. that's it. That's it. Um, I know a lot of people are asking if we're going to be still having service for New Year's. So I think this is a good time. To yes, we that. will be having a New Year's Day service. Yes. What better way to start the year than in the house of God? Amen. You know, guys, real quick, you know what a tithe is? A tithe is a 10% of, of everything. Like, if, for instance, the Bible says to give your first fruits. Yeah. So before you spend a dollar on anything else, you first give to the Lord. Well, in the same way, think of it this way. Be, before I do anything for 2023, mm -hmm. let me give the first day to the Lord. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, that's your first fruits, guys. That is a form of a tithe. That's an ugly picture. It is. Guys, you know Netflix, you know, how it just shows, like, if you let it run, it just shows, like, different pictures of different shows. It is derailed from what we were I talking know. about. Something so beautiful. It's creepy. And it, just... it looked ugly. You know. Oh, my God. Shut off. There. There. Don't watch that. I know. That looked ugly. Okay. Keep talking. So, guys, it's a beautiful way. To start the year. To say, Lord, the year is not promised to me. But on my first day, I'm going to tithe my time, my year, to you. And come, man. I expect nothing but a full service because what else is there to do but to be in a house of God together with your church family on the first what a better, what's, what, how much better can it be to kick off the year? I know, to wake up, you know. Yes, you should be able to wake up. The service is not that early. So, yeah. It starts at 10 o'clock. We're the ones that have to be there early, not you. Yeah. So, you should be able to get up by 10 o'clock in the morning and be there at service. Amen. We got to be there early. So, <laughs> you shouldn't be out there drinking alcohol anyway. So, I'm just talking about in general waking uh, up, period. You know, we got to get up there early. We got to be there to practice and do all of that. So you I'm guys can be there at 10 o'clock in the morning because people are going to be up till 12 o'clock midnight anyways, you know, wishing a happy new year the night before, mm -hmm. you know. Which and is, then go to bed. And go to bed. Yeah, go to bed. And I want to say this last thing. And then you say, I want to say 60 seconds. I want to say something to the men. And I want you to say something to the women. Okay. Men, bring your wives and family to the church. As the man and leader of the house, get a backbone, tighten up your bootstraps, and do what God has called you to do and be a leader. Because if you stay in bed, your family's going to stay in bed. Get up, do what's right, go and, and give unto the Lord what belongs to the Lord, and lead as the man that you are supposed to be. Lead your family. Quit playing games once and for all. Stand up and lead the family. In the direction of God. Because they're going to follow you. I'm sorry. I know you said you were going to say it to the men. But I'm going to add this to the men. I have to. But um, men. You know. I, I want to say this to you. Because you being you being the men. Um, it's so important. You can't. You can't say that you're, you're praying. That you're praying for your wife to 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 um 
to catch on or you're praying for your wife and you're praying for your wife and the moment you see your wife catches excitement to the things of the Lord and then the moment that that excitement happens you pull away um, don't be that person don't be the one to discourage be the one to encourage don't be the one to to the moment that your family starts to get excited for the things of God to be the one to to kill that moment in your family be the one to seize that opportunity and seize that moment to push them forward push them along the way and be praise the Lord for that and join in with that excitement and thank God for that because you know how amazing it is for a family to come together and praise the Lord together it is so beautiful when a family comes together and and joins together joins hands together and is able to you know how many people would love to have their family in praising God together and 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 serving God together it is so beautiful but it takes a man to lead and i'm asking that you take lead in 2023 you take lead you be the one to be the encourager women i'm gonna say this to you it's time for you to to step aside and let your husband and let the man lead let him lead because a lot of the times we want to be the ones to lead and you can't do that anymore you need to let him do what he needs to do and a lot of times you put your you put your foot in the mouth and, 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 and you you put your foot in the way you get in the way stop being in the way and let him do what he needs to do so that he can be that man let him be the man that God has called him to be for your family let him do that and be the one to encourage him so that he can be all that God has called him to be in your family so that you guys can do this together because 2023 with with everything that is going on in this world with everything that that the enemy is bringing into this world we need to be even stronger together as a husband and wife for our children for this family for the family now the family has to be stronger now i'm talking about marriages have to be stronger we we need to be stronger as a kingdom we need to be stronger as a as as in in our spiritual walks everything we need to be stronger in 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 as the kingdom we have to come back stronger because we are fighting an enemy out there and if if we're not strong together then how are we going to do it do you not understand that the enemy is out there to devour our children they are out there to devour our children. And if we do not stand up as, as husband and wife, then our children have no, they have no chance at all. They have no chance at all. It's like the enemy will come in and just take them out so easily. Yeah. And it, it has to start with us. It has to. I agree. You know, we have to do it, guys. We have to do it for our children. We have to do it because we're the only thing that they were we are the only thing that they will know the only gospel the only way to the gospel yeah no one else is going to teach them the gospel they will only hear it from us you know this world will say the greatest thing a man can do is buy his his family a home a house or and those are great things i mean yeah it is um no, I'm sorry. The greatest thing a man could ever do is lead his family to Jesus. Yeah. And um, you can be doing everything else that the world is saying a man does, but if you fail to lead your family to Christ, you have failed. And I don't say this because, like, I'm pointing fingers. I'm saying this because I learned this the hard way. I learned this the hard way. But I truly know, and I know now, the greatest thing, that the only thing that will carry into eternity is how you lead your family. That's it. 
And and I truly believe that when you do that, in, in honoring God, when you honor God, everything else falls in place. It really does. So, all it right, really guys. Does. Well, guys, we love you guys, and we will see you guys on Sunday. Tonight, we'll see you guys. Well, yeah, we'll see you guys t uh, tonight, but um, for New Year's yes. Day, we will see you guys. Um, we give expect that a, offering. We give expect offering a full together. house. Yeah. Let's, let's start the year off together. Yeah, let's do it, guys. All right. All right. Bye, Bye guys. Love you.